When I talk to someone about rings and they put this face, most likely than not is because they think that the only way to train with rings is this, or they remember their most traumatic earthquake moment. And they completely push away that option thinking that rings are way too hard for them when in reality, they just tried exercises that are way above their level. So we've created this routine for you to stop feeling so intimidated by these guys and start reaping the incredible benefits of ring training, including muscle and strength building, joint conditioning, and scapula stability, so you can build a solid and long-lasting foundation. The routine will consist of pulling and pushing exercises, and will teach you how to increase the difficulty level so you can keep progressing over time. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoy Ring's content. And now, you know what time it is. First, let's start with the warm-up. Logically, when training with rings, the only two parts of your body that connect you to them are your arms, which means that we're going to get very familiar with what our scapula is doing in pretty much all of the exercises. So we're going to warm it up doing scapula push-up circles, keeping our arms fully extended, which will force us to push from the scapula. The point is that you get very intimate with how you move your scapula. So instead of mindlessly drawing circles, go through these four checkpoints of traction, depression, retraction, and elevation. That will create the circular movement pattern we're looking for. You can pick to either do it in a quadruped position with knees on the floor or off the floor to intensify it. Scapula row circles. Following that, we're going to do the same movement pattern for pulling, taking our time to draw these big circles. The more parallel to the floor you are, the harder it gets. So pick the inclination accordingly and don't forget to measure it with your feet for consistency. Up next, we have the plank. This one will help you activate your entire body, creating tension from head to toe, priming that feeling of moving your body in one piece, which will be very needed in the next exercises. So the plank will serve us to pre-activate that. So done with the warm-up, let's start building the foundation. The first one will be the top support. Practicing this will help you gain stability, which will translate to any other exercise you do above the rings. So place the rings at a height that allows you to touch the ground with your toes and slowly start to remove the support, session after session, until you find yourself holding it for the prescribed time without support. Avoid bending your arms. Even a slight bend makes a huge difference. Keep them straight and don't protract too much. Neutralize that and just focus on pushing your shoulders down. On level one, the target is to get to the unassisted top support with a neutral grip. The target for level two is to do it with the rings turned out. After that, we'll build the base for pulling movements with scapula pull-ups. This will get you introduced to gain straight arm pulling and grip strength, which are so needed in pretty much all the exercises happening below the rings. Once again, place the rings at a height that you can rest your toes and progressively remove the assistance until you can complete the prescribed reps unassisted. The target for level one is to do them unassisted on level two, you can start to add a pull-up to the movement. For example, doing two pull-ups and finish the set with scapula pull-ups until you can eventually do five reps of pull-ups. Now let's get into the strength and muscle building exercises. Push-ups. Setting up standards on the ring's height is key so you can keep a consistent intensity and progress effectively. In this case, lower the rings until the top part is at neat height. Then place your feet directly below the bar or anchor point and lean forward to do your push-ups. And watch this, instead of letting your body sink down on the top, notice the difference between these two. You want to aim for a scapular retraction on the way down and finish the rep with a protraction, helping you get the most out of the exercise working through a full range of motion. The target for level one is to complete the reps with feet below the bar and work your way to level two, walking backwards until you have the rings below the bar and can do all sets and reps. Up next, we'll do rows. Place the top of the rings at hip height level and take three steps back for the level one progression. Keep your palms facing each other for a neutral grip and keep a standard touching your ribs on every single rep. As far as scapula movement, start the rep with a retraction and keep it throughout the movement until you go back to the bottom. Relax and reset the retraction until you become familiar with the movement pattern and can do it fluidly. The target for level one is to complete the sets and reps with three steps forward. Target for level two is to complete it with your feet below the bar. So done with these two, let's get into the accessory exercises. Ring flies. Set the top of the rings at knee height and take three steps forward. Place your wrist on top of the rings to shorten the lever a bit and have a solid point of support. You'll feel a big difference in how strong you can push from this position as opposed to this one. Keep your arms fully straight 
and lower down with control, unlike the push-ups. On flies, we want to stay away from retraction and keep more of a protracted scapular position, which might end up in neutral as fatigue kicks in. The standard for level one is to do it with three steps forward and work your way to level two where your feet are below the bar. Next up, we have reverse flies. With the top part of the ring at hip height, take three steps backwards, lean back and keep your arms extended. Start the movement with a scapular retraction and keep it throughout the entire rep, just like you've seen in rows. It's very common to lose that retraction in the lowering phase, so don't do it until you reach the bottom of the rep. Then you can relax and reset the retraction until you get a smooth movement pattern. Flexing the neck is also a very common mistake. Instead of looking forward, look at the ceiling and you'll notice how your neck shifts to a more neutral position. As far as your feet go, you can pick to either do it elevating your toes in each rep, which makes you lean back and forward smoother, or with your toes down to help you grip the floor better in case it's somewhat slippery. Given the challenging nature of this movement, we have more progressions for it to go from level 1 to level 2. The standard for level 1 is to complete the reps at a 3 step forward distance. If that's too intense, you can work your way there with negatives, rowing your way up and lowering with your arms extended until you unlock your first rep with arms extended. The goal for level 2 is to do it at a 2 step forward distance. And we'll finish this block with one of the best core exercises you can do the ring rollout. Set the lower part of the rings at an ankle height level and place your knees right below the bar. Keep your arms fully extended and lower down. Given that this is an anti-extension exercise, arching your back means that you are compensating for the lack of strength. Aim to keep your core flexed and lock that position in as you go up and down. The standard for level 1 is to do it with your knees below the bar and work your way to level 2 where you do this standing with your feet below the bar. Finally, we'll finish the session with our classic cooldown of shaking and stillness. Shaking. Standing with your feet at hip distance apart, start to bounce and shake letting your arms drop as if they were heavy and generate rapid contractions from the core or your shoulders. You'll notice how you start to flush away the tension stored in your muscles and ligaments from the work you've done. Feel free to explore different movement patterns and ways to shake here and really place your attention on what feels good. Right after that, we'll do the polar opposite by standing still, calming our nervous system, calming our minds. And here you can pick one of two anchors to focus on. You can direct your attention towards the vibration going on inside your body, which could be described as a tingling sensation, or you can tune into the sensations of breathing, following each inhalation, pausing between your breaths, the exhalation, staying very very close to the full breathing cycle well family here you have the full routine so you can get your rings journey started on your practice sessions you can download it completely for free you've got the link right in the description as well as in the pinned comment thank you so much for being here make sure to like subscribe if you're new here and until next time keep moving keep practicing and keep learning we love you family